Well, good evening, Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas, and what an amazing joy it is for me to be here tonight. This is my very first service as your brand new senior minister and spiritual leader here at at, uh, CSLGLV, and I am so, so grateful. I'm so grateful for everyone who worked to make this happen. I'm so grateful for this amazing opportunity I've been given. I just want to give special thanks to some some particular people here. Um, First off, the search committee. For all of their work, uh, led by Justin Vogel. They have done a tremendous job to interview candidates, to bring in people, to speak to the community, to organize everything that happened to bring this about. And so it's just really, truly a blessing to have su- such consciousness working through these people. And I want to thank the core council and all of its members, both the current members and the previous minis- minis- members who have worked so hard to keep this community going, to find places for us to meet, to uh, create the structure in which everything is allowed to happen, to just simply be that consciousness that is allowing spirit to unfold through it. I want to give thanks for the co-creation committee that uh, visioned for this and brought this into fruition, led by Reverend Colleen Tanaka. I know it was a powerful, powerful group of people that brought it together. You can tell that by the covenant that was written through the process. Um, I also want to give thanks to uh, Reverend Colleen and Reverend Claire, who stepped in and acted as your contract ministers over the last, gosh, close to two years. Oh, and I want to give thanks to the practitioners who held the consciousness to uh, allow this uh, amazing experience to happen for me and for you. And I want to give thanks for each person in this community who has continued to support it in all the different ways that you do through your service, through your tithing, through your consciousness, through your action. Just being here and being you has made a huge difference for everything. So I just want to give thanks for all of that. As I said, I'm so gro- so grateful. This has been a quite a journey for me, 17 year process of uh, getting to this point and almost all of it happened here at CSLGLV. And so I'm immensely grateful for that. And I'm so grateful and blessed for the opportunity I have to be here in service to you. And so uh, thank you. I just really appreciate all of that. So I'm going to get off into our topic for tonight. This month, uh, Centers for Spiritual Living's theme focus is the journey of becoming. We're going to take a look at this in lots of different ways throughout the month. And I thought it would be really good to tie in a bunch of different spiritual practices with the topics that we're going to discuss on Sunday mornings. And so this idea of this journey of becoming, um, it unfolds through um, lots of different ways. And there are certain things that we have to do along the way to allow it to manifest in the most um, beneficial way for us for each one of us. You know, we've been in this really um, unique time in our lives. This uh, two year pause in our regular activity that has been um, brought about by the pandemic. It has created an opportunity for us to look at our lives in a different way and decide exactly how it is we want to continue our lives. I know many of us have this uh, sense of wanting to get back to normal, wanting to get back to the way things used to be. I'm not sure that's even possible. I'm not sure that's um, in our highest and best interest, and I'm really not sure that we could even possibly go back to the way everything was before. But I believe we can bring in aspects of that life before the pandemic into our new life and allow it to shift and change as our life unfolds, this, uh, this two-year hiatus from what was has um, created an opening in us for radical change. And it's our opportunity to embrace it, to allow it to see what is actually really wanting to emerge through us. I think that's what this journey of becoming is all about. It's this movement from what has been into what is possible. And I think that is a a super great opportunity that we have to do that. You know, the last um, two years have have actually been rather a collective trauma globally. 
people in, the, in all, all around the world have experienced similar aspects of this um, pandemic and the, and the results of that to lesser degrees, depending on what your location is and how severe the, the pandemic hits you. But everyone has had an opportunity to um, reflect and to look at what it is that's happening in our lives and what it is we want to have happen for the remainder of it. You know, I remember um, back in my early 20s, making a plan for my life. You know, I was going to college, finish college, get a job. I um, get a, I had a career in as, a, as a teacher at the, with the Clark County School District. I knew I would be there for 30 years doing my job. I had a, had a plan. I was going to retire and then take find another career and, uh, and, you know, work through that for however many years I was called to work for that. And I had no idea it would be ministry. But I'm so thrilled that it was. But, I, you know, I had this plan, and, and the plan has gone along pretty well for the most part. And then we have something that comes along like this that makes us look at what we're doing. And I'm, I've spent a lot of time in the last year reflecting on my life and what it, exactly it is that I want to give my life energy to. What is it I, I really want to experience in my life and be a part of in my life? And so, uh, so this uh, this uh, time for pandemic, we can we can shift that from it being a collective trauma to it being a collective pause. That this collective pause is a, actually a gift that we have been given to reevaluate where we're at and what is important and what it is we want to have continue in our lives. And so, as we're looking at this this idea of becoming. There's some spiritual practices that we can do to um, get clearer about what is coming through. And then pra other practices that we can do to actually assist it in coming into fruition, assist it into becoming. And so I want to take this month and look at some of those practices and see what it is we can do to get clear about what, it, what is wanting to emerge through us and then to actually allow that to happen. And so the first practice that I want to talk about today is visioning. Now, visioning, I, I'm sure many of you are familiar with that. We, we do it very frequently here at Centers for Spiritual Living. And I know Centers for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas has a very active and robust vision core. Um, Reverend Colleen and Tanaka and I founded it back in 2010. And, I, and we served on that committee for, gosh, I think five years something like that, um, as um, Reverend Colleen was the, the chair of it, led the vision committee, vision uh, corps, and uh, I served on there as well. And, and it was a great opportunity to catch a glimpse of what was unfolding as CSL GLV and what was possible. We visioned for different projects. We visioned for the center in general. We visioned for um, specific groups within the center and, um, and allowed all of that information that came through from spirit to guide and direct the unfoldment of whatever those opportunities were, whatever the, the um, people that are the group that we were visioning for, or whatever the, the um, event was that we were seeking to find the highest idea of it. So visioning, um, in my experience, has been very powerful. It, one, one thing that visioning has done for me, it's allowed me to discern what was actually spiritual truth coming through and what was, you know, the ego's chatter, that ego mind that, that uh, is constantly uh, trying to distract us from different things. And so I, I was able to learn to, dis to discern what was actually spiritual truth and then take action when I was called to take action on that. And, and quite literally, there have been times that it was life-saving for me to uh, follow those, um, that guidance that I was given when I knew it was, when I knew it was so clear. And so um, I'd like us to take us through a visioning practice here tonight to um, begin to discern what is wanting to become through us, through each one of us individually. And so I encourage you to get something to write with, pencil and paper. If you have a journal, that's great. Just something that you can jot down any ideas or anything that comes through during this process. Um, it's it's important to record it because. I find that sometimes I hear things or feel things or, or something comes through. And if I don't capture it in some way, I lose it. 
And so I encourage you to just get something to um, to record for tonight. And it, well, I'm also going to encourage you to keep doing this throughout the week. And so you can keep adding to these um, different um, questions that I'm going to ask that will prompt different things to come through. And so envisioning what we begin with is by centering ourselves in spirit, centering ourselves into that unified consciousness. And then we ask a series of guided questions. I'll ask the questions. I'll pause. And what we do is we just allow spirit to move through. Sometimes spirit comes through as um, a word or a phrase. Sometimes it comes through as a, a sound. You might hear something, but you're not really hearing it, but you know that you, you know that it's there. Sometimes it's a smell. I often get lemon and cinnamon. I don't know why, but I do. Um, sometimes it's a, a song. We had a, um, a Vision Core playlist that came through all the time when we were doing the Vision Core for CSLGLV. So we always kept a, a running playlist of songs that were coming through in our visioning process. Sometimes it's a, an image of something that you see. Oftentimes for me, I don't actually see a picture. I just get a sense of something. Now, when these things start to come through, one of our natural inclinations is to try to figure out why. What does that mean? Me, I like to go look up the metaphysical meaning of things. You know, I see a buffalo on a hill. What does that mean? But I want you to set that aside. I want you to try to set aside that um, innate desire to figure it out. And just begin to sit with it and let it be what it is without uh, trying to judge it, without trying to evaluate it, without trying to figure out, is this right or wrong? Is this my ego coming through? Just dot it down on the paper. I find that if I put it on the paper, then it's out of my head. If I don't put it on the paper, if I'm judging it in my head, I don't put it out on the paper, it stays there and I can't get anything else. So I just encourage you, just write it down. You can deal with it later. Just get it out of your head. So um, we ask questions about what the highest idea is for whatever it is we're envisioning for. And then sometimes we'll ask some detail-oriented questions like, you know, are there words or phrases that are coming up? Are there symbols? Um, is there a feeling tone to it? Things like that. That's generally all about the high idea. And then we ask questions about releasing. What must I release? The premise is that we're complete in the mind of God. We're complete in spirit. There's nothing that needs to be added to us. Michael Beckwith says all spiritual growth is about is 100% about releasing. And so what do I need to release? What do I need to let go of? Oftentimes, um, it'll be something that you've worked on for a long time. In our vision core, it used to come through as fear, lack, and limitation. It would come through so often that we would just abbreviate it FLL. And then it started coming through envisioning as FLL. Not, we didn't hear the words, we just heard those, those uh, initials coming through. So oftentimes it's something that's been a long-term issue and we just need, we know we need to let it go and it just keeps coming up. So again, write it down and move on with it. And then we ask questions about what must I embrace or what must I embody? In other words, is there anything that I need to start drawing into my life? Maybe it's an openness or willingness or um, something like that, that where it's a, a space for us to grow through this um, embracing or this embodying. And um, then uh, we always end with the question, is there anything else I need to know at this time? Anything else coming through at this time? And then sometimes we add a few questions in here and there. We allow spirit, as we're leading a visioning, we allow spirit to guide us through that. So sometimes we're guided to ask a question. I found um, that most often those questions that I'm, I'm spontaneously guided to often have a, a powerful impact on the visioning process for everyone. So, like I said, we're going to go through the visioning. I will take us into a, just a brief centering, grounding ourselves in spirit, and then I'll ask the series of questions. And uh, then I'll, at the end, I will do a short little benediction around that. Okay, so I just invite you to get comfortable. Just relax into your seat. I like to have my pen and paper handy and I just open my eyes, write it down, and then close my eyes and go back into the process. So just have that nearby. <sighs> just taking a nice couple of deep breaths. 
conscious breaths, breaths that get you in touch with your body. And so as we begin this process of centering and grounding, we bring ourselves fully present into this perfect now, into this body that we inhabit, knowing that it is a vessel of the divine. We ground ourselves in that unconditional love that infinite intelligence, that creative energy that has brought us into existence, that is moving through us and showing up as us in all that we are and all that we do. This divine loving intelligence seeks only the unfoldment of our highest and greatest good. For it is through our unfoldment that spirit experiences this amazing world. And so resting in this place of deep peace, we ask the question, what is the highest idea of my life as we emerge from this pandemic? What is the highest idea of my life as we emerge from the pandemic? What is waiting to be born through me? What is waiting to be born through me right now? Are there any words or symbols coming through that represent this highest idea of what is wanting to become through me? Taking in a nice deep breath, making sure that we are centered and grounded. We ask the question, what must I release in order for this highest idea to emerge? What must I let go of in order to become? Are there any fears that are holding me back? What doubts do I have about this even being possible?
What must I release? Taking in another breath to recenter and ground. I ask the question, what must I embrace in order to become what I am called to become? What must I embrace in order to become what I am called to become? In what area of my life am I called to grow? Taking in another conscious breath. We ask the question, what gifts and skills do I already possess that will serve me in becoming? What gifts and skills do I already possess that will serve me in becoming? And one more deep breath. We ask the question, is there anything else wanting to be known at this time? Oh, how good it has been to spend time just simply listening. Asking the questions we're called to ask and listening for what spirit wants to reveal. I'm so grateful for the willingness of each person to simply do this work. For I know that when we tap into that collective consciousness, we are all uplifted. Nothing happens in isolation. And when we catch a glimpse of our own becoming, we empower others to become right along with us. And so I just give thanks for this amazing practice. Thanks for the willingness of each person to be here and do that. And thanks for the unfoldment of spirit as each one of our own lives. And so I simply release this and I let it be. And so it is. Amen. Mm. 
So just take a moment and just write down anything, jot down anything that you want to do. Any, if you have any feelings that are coming up about this, you feel like an uh, energetic, uh, an emotional or energetic um, word or phrase that's coming up, go ahead and put that down. Just take a moment and capture anything else that wants to come through right now as we close out this visioning. Visioning is not a static process. It is something that is alive within each one of us. And it, might, it may come through at different points, even when you're not sitting in the practice of visioning. So I encourage you to keep a running list of what is coming through for you for this next week about these ideas around the journey of becoming, what is being called forth from within you for this next phase of your life, this post-pandemic error that we're entering into. What is wanting to emerge through you? So just keep track of it. And uh, next week, we're going to do a different, another spiritual practice using some of that information. So I encourage you, if you'd like to just go back each week, you can uh, find out where this uh, section of the talk starts on the YouTube video and just redo the vid visioning each day during the week or as many days as you possibly can to just see what is actually wanting to emerge through us. It is in the consistent and conscious practice of visioning that things really start to shift in our lives. So I encourage you to do this throughout the week. It really is a very powerful practice. We're going to have um, Justin here singing one of, one of my favorite songs for you, um, which is all about this idea of what is wanting to become through me. And so uh, we'll turn it over here to Justin. to be you 
are a tithing center here. We actually give back 10% of all that we receive in a, a conscientious way of keeping that law of circulation moving through our lives and through the life of this center. And so we are so grateful for your contributions that have one, maintained and sustained this place over this crazy couple of years that we've had. And, uh, and we certainly appreciate your continued support. So we have several ways that you can contribute. We have my favorite way, which is text to give. We also have a contribution link below this video. And of course, you're always welcome to send us a check in the mail if you'd like to do that too. We certainly do appreciate all of your generous contributions that help maintain and sustain our amazing community that we have here. I want to thank you all so much for being here with us tonight. And I want to give special thanks to Justin, our incredible music director, for the music that he's provided for tonight. I also want to give thanks to our media team who puts this all together. Without them, we would not be able to bring this to you. I hope to see you all this coming Sunday at our service. We're going to take an expanded look at the topics that we were discussing tonight. I'm hoping that each one of you have an incredible and blessed week and that we see you on Sunday. Namaste. monthly publication, Science of Mind magazine, is a treasure to be read and contemplated. Along with in-depth articles, there is a day-to-day -day spiritual support to be gleaned from its daily guides. Licensed practitioner Lynn Frankenberger hosts Adventures in Faith every Tuesday at 11 a.m. on Zoom, and you're invited to join in. This is a weekly group discussion that focuses on those daily guides and how to apply them. Check Facebook and our weekly newsletter for more details. Greetings from the North Pole. Santa sends us love, blessings, and gratitude. My name is Judy Poteet, and I am thrilled to announce that it's time for Secret Santa. The Center for Spiritual Living has been helping disadvantaged families at Christmas for almost 30 years. Children are chosen that do not qualify for assistance from the usual sources. Much of our support goes to families that would not normally need extra help. But because of an unexpected event or circumstances, their savings have been depleted and they will not be able to give their children anything at Christmas time. Those other times our support goes to families that might be called the working poor. Those families that work hard at low paying jobs and live paycheck to paycheck. This year has been especially difficult. It takes about $100 to sponsor a child, $50 for the clothes, and $50 for the books, toys, and other gifts. If you don't have the exact amount to contribute, we will accept any amount, combine them together, and shop for a child. Or if you have several hundred dollars, we'll accept that also. To, don to contribute, click the donate button here, or you can mail a check to the center with Secret Santa noted. If you have any questions, please contact me. Now is the time you can make a difference by sponsoring your child as, and creating a Christmas miracle. These children know their parents' circumstances and they expect very little, if anything, at Christmas. Your contribution helps them to believe that anything is possible. CSL Greater Las Vegas brings you much of your favorite spiritual music every Friday at 7 p.m. with Spiritual Soundscapes. Enjoy performances from CSL GLV vocalists along with special guest singers. It's music for your soul. Subscribe to the CSL GLV YouTube channel to get a convenient link sent to you for each musical performance. Next Sunday, we will all enjoy the inaugural Sunday celebration service of our new senior minister, Reverend Laura Hallett. Join Reverend Laura as she presents Surrender is Action. Surrender often has a negative connotation. This usually comes from the fact that as a society, most of us are taught that it's not good to give up. It's not good to let go of whatever it is we are unwilling to surrender. The truth is, surrender is one of the highest forms of spiritual practice we can engage in. 
It is a mindful act of seeing the truth of a situation and what is available for us that will help on our path of becoming. Join our practitioners, music ministry, and Reverend Laura as we begin our month-long journey of becoming. At CSL Greater Las Vegas, it is our mission to inspire spiritual discovery through community connection, exploration, and celebration. This mission supports the all-inclusive vision of Centers for Spiritual Living worldwide in which we envision a world that works for everyone and all of creation.